Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Where? <laughs> yeah. Where are uh, hello, everybody. I can't see you, Victoria. Only the top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Hi, I'm Judy Neal. This is the Edgewalker Cafe on September 23rd, 2021. And um, I'm going to let Patricia introduce our guest in a minute. Um, but as, as we start this meeting, we always like to take just a moment to recognize that we're in sacred space and in community together. And so uh, I ask you if you're comfortable to just take a moment to close your eyes or, or lower your lids gently and notice your breath, the breath of life, the breath that breathes the air and the oxygen into your lungs, enlivening you. And notice where your breath starts physically. Where do you feel your breath start? Just pay attention to the starting of your breath. And now shift your attention to where your exhale starts. Nothing to fix, nothing to change, just being present with your inhale and your exhale. Where do they start? Your inhale and your exhale, your breathing is life and life is what connects us and spirit is what connects us and in this spirit of sacred space we begin this meeting thank you you may open your eyes whenever you're comfortable <laughs> thank you i'm going to let a couple more people into the room there we go Welcome everyone to the Edgewalker Cafe. Uh, Patricia, I'm going to turn it over to you to introduce our magnificent and wonderful guest today. Of course. Judy, thank you so much as always for um, your vision as the one who birthed Edgewalkers many, many years ago with your book and for holding space and, and for including and creating, co-creating this. Thank you so much for today. And um, I'm Patricia Campanile and I have been a certified edge walker coach and facilitator oh my god judy i don't know it's a couple decades now it's been a while it's been a while yeah. so i'm honored to be the host of our september um edge walker cafe and i'm especially excited to introduce and interview today dr pamela girali and uh pamela and i have been friends and kind of soul colleagues and sisters since i was figuring out i think it's been since like 2000 a long time when I first went to Naples, I started a group called Women of Vision and Action or WOVA, and I met Pamela that way, and we have been fast friends, but also um, collaborators on, on different projects and things over the years. And I'm actually going to let Pamela introduce herself in terms of her intro more than I think better than I could do it. But today's focus is on um, discovering your divine blueprint and dancing as a diva or divo in the world and really how and why that is so essential and important now more than ever to really go from our ego to our, um, our essence and what that means to discover, activate and walk in our divine blueprint. Mm -hmm. So um, I will tell you that Pamela shared the divine blueprint with me when it really first came through it came, really came through her as an inspiration, as an idea, as an activation, whatever you want to call it. It's been decades ago almost. And we talked about it at the time and she was designing the blueprint. And I said, oh my gosh, this is something for all of humanity. Now this was in maybe the turn of the century, <laughs> I mean, early 2000s. And here we are in 2021. And when we were speaking yesterday, we both realized that now more than ever, all of us, but today we're specifically focusing on Pamela and her um, creations and her offerings. Now is a time more than ever for people to, in humanity, to understand the importance and necessity 
what is your divine blueprint and how to best utilize it in these times of change and evolution and as, as, as conscious edge walkers. So Dr. Pamela Girali, I'm going to turn it over to you, Pamela, and, and please um, thank you for being here. Thank you all for being here and share with us um, what is the divine blueprint and where did this come from um, and why is it necessary now more than ever? Hi, everybody. I am so excited to be here. And Patricia, it's delightful once again to be working with you. And Judy, thank you for your vision and for allowing me to share this time with you all. It is just amazing. And I would like to also mention that my husband is listening in and uh, wave, honey. Uh, he's oh, hi, Jim. <laughs> He is my greatest supporter. And uh, when I was doing my shows, he slept all my stuff and he's just been such a pivotal part of this process. In fact, I was, um, as the blueprint was evolving, we would walk in the mornings and I would share with him my latest download and, uh, and he'd listen so patiently, you know, and he, he just, was there and supported me. And one day I finally did a workshop and I built the blueprint in front of everybody. And he goes, I get it. I finally get it. And uh, I had been giving him bits and pieces all this time. But so I appreciate him so much, my love of my life. So um, first I would like to tell you a little bit about my background because I am really an unusual candidate for this kind of thing to emerge. I was raised in a very fundamental Christian home and community and church. It was very limiting and very negative. And I was raised with what I called the uh, unholy trinity of guilt, shame, and fear. And I don't know whether any of you can relate to that or not, but that is, <laughs> I see some hands. <laughs> and when I finally, um, you know, I, would, I tried to be a little Miss Goody Two Shoes, but I really feel that that part of my life, I was a victim of religious abuse. It made me fearful of God and it pushed me away from anything religious. I didn't know the difference between religion and spirituality at the time. But I left all that behind, went to college, became a nurse, pursued a master's degree in public health, and had a very exciting career in nursing and public health with advancing leadership positions with the American Cancer Society. I was a national consultant for them and I was program director for the whole United States for Prevent Blindness America. So, and the first education director for the Oncology Nursing Society. So I had a lot of really awesome, fun leadership experiences. And my life was devoid of anything spiritual. The only time I went to church was to sing in the choir. I love to sing and I had studied voice. And so I did that. And as soon as the minister got on the platform, I shut down. I never heard a word. It was interesting, but I love to sing. And so I, I went. But I had an opportunity when I was the program director for Prevent Blindness to go to the Center for Creative Leadership in Greensboro, North Carolina. I don't know whether any of you, I see Judy raising her hand. Yes, it was awesome, profound. I did their leader lab program. And for the first time did journaling and visioning and worked with change partners. Um, we did nature walks all kinds of wonderful art expressions and things like that. And that was a pivotal moment in my life. I was in my late or mid thirties, mid to late thirties. And so I'm a late bloomer, <laughs> but I, my life changed from that moment on. In fact, when I went back to work, I realized that my job was no longer compatible with my new vision. Mm. And so I quit my job. I had just been married, so I didn't have to worry about paying the bills, but I left everything 
And I lost my sense of being because I identified with my position and my work. I lost my connections with people. You know, I worked with all these teams. I lost my focus. I was just in this limbo state, but I became a spiritual junkie, so to speak. I began reading books and going to workshops and studying. And for a couple of years, I just absorbed everything that I could. And it was confusing because everybody said, oh, you have to do this. This is my path. This is my practice. You have to do this. And I'd try that and it didn't feel quite right, you know, and so I try something else, but I collected all these ideas and whatever, but it just was in bits and pieces and it didn't really fit and it didn't really work for me. And then one day I was awakened at 3.30 in the morning. This was in, I think, July of 1995. I mean, this has been going on for quite some time. And all this information started flowing in. I was just lying there awake in bed in a state of openness and receptivity and information started flowing in. So I just kind of laid there amazed and collected all these ideas. And then after about an hour and a half, I got up, I went to my office and entered the information that I had received into my computer. Well, this happened three or four times a week for six months. And it started as a simple like mind, body, spirit triangle and information. And then it kept growing and emerging until I had this beautiful matrix of information that I call the blueprint for the human spirit. And it evolved in harmony with my own growth and understanding. And every time that I embraced one of these new ideas and integrated it into my way of being, more information would flow in. It would just kept expanding and expanding. And I kept learning and growing with it. It is my like divine choreographer, my own inner guru. And it just kind of flowed in. Well, the blueprint evolved and evolved to the point where it so there was so much that I was just amazed. But it also came with sacred geometry. And at that point, I had never heard of what sacred geometry was. But I had these beautiful, colorful um, diagrams that kept changing along with the matrix as everything grew and evolved. And, um, but I'd like to show you low tech wise, I'm just gonna hold up a picture of a simplified version of the matrix. Can you see this? It shows across the top that there are five dimensions, physical, mental, emotional, intuitive, and spiritual, and down the side are five um, fields of existence, and they include um, the energetic or the quantum, personal, social, global, and eternal. And the interesting thing that I discovered about the matrix is that there's all these relationships because each row represents something and merges together to become something greater and each column becomes something more profound when it is uh, merged together. And as a whole, what I believe is that this divine blueprint provided me the opportunity to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. Mm -hmm. And what a gift. I mean, I am so blessed to have this and to be able to share this. Life, as we all know it, is very fragmented. Uh, we have our physical uh, bodies to care for. We have relationships. We are in the workplace. We have this spiritual uh, part of us. I mean, we're, they're just all over the place. But this brought it all together for me into something that made sense. Now, I have a very rational, logical mind. And so it made sense for me to create this beautiful 
uh, masterpiece for it to flow through me into a format that that appealed to me. Now, some people may not find charts exciting, <laughs> but I think they you can show a lot in a very little, uh, you know, with one picture. Yes, Patricia. No, what I just want to let people know that um, you can have you can download the blueprint, right? I mean, yes. do it now, but. If you go on uh, Pamela's website, Dr. Pamela Girali, um, one word, .com, if you look under, I think it's uh, resources or offerings. It's it's under it's, offerings under and offerings. blueprint. And click on blueprint and you will be able to see it and download it and get a copy for yourself. Mm -hmm. just, just as a sidebar, I want to let people know that among everything else that you have to offer. But please, Pamela, go ahead. I'm just thinking as I'm listening yes. to you is you are a true edge walker, right, Judy? I mean, she's like... <laughs> And no wonder we've been friends all these years. I know. Anyway, and how much courage and willingness and surrender it takes to stay the course and to continue to let go and to allow this to come through you. So it's very right. inspiring. Right. Now there's something else that you can get on my website. You can, on the homepage, drpamelagerat.com, you can scroll down a little bit and sign up and download this free booklet. And in it are, is this geometry and the chart and a couple and a lot of other information. But, you know, the one thing about the blueprint was that it was a very exciting, enlightening, intellectual experience for about six years. It was all intellectual because that's where I was coming from. I was trained in science and nursing and things like that. And I was always very rational and logical. And so it wasn't easy for me to kind of open my heart, so to speak, although this was you know, a profound experience. And one day in uh, October of 2001, I was meditating and sitting on my lanai early in the morning. It was a Sunday morning. And to be honest with you, I'm not real good at meditating because I'm hyperactive, as you can tell. I'm <laughs> and um, But within a very short period of time, I went into this deep, deep place. And in an hour and a half, I experienced 15 past lives. I experienced the most dramatic, profound experience of people from all walks of life, children, men, women, older people. Um, and they span the ages from ancient Mayan times to more recent early 1900s. And I mean, I was so blown away. In fact, I didn't know how many there were, but when I woke up, I came to, I ran into my office and I wrote two lines or so in my journal about each person so I wouldn't forget them. And I counted them and there were 15. Well, at that time I had 15 primary boxes in the blueprint matrix. Um. And there was a person that showed me exactly what each of those meant, I experienced it. From that moment on, the blueprint became fully integrated as a part of me. And I went to church and I was looking totally out of it, I know, and a friend said, what happened to you? She says, go home and write it down. So I did, and I have a, about a 15 page document that describes each of these experiences and as I was writing them and analyzing them a little bit, I realized that the people that represented the self level were all victims. The people that were in the social realm tried hard and failed. And the people in the global realm got it. Mm. They lived consciously and compassionately. And to me, that was a perfect illustration of how we evolve spiritually. Mm -hmm. We go from being victims where everything happens to us and we have no control to a point where we take control and we do our best through ego effort to make a difference. And sometimes we do okay and sometimes we fail. And then when we open our hearts and allow 
spirit to express through us and as us, then we can show up in our lives as essence expressing. Later that week, I visited with a friend who was a therapist and she asked me when I told her all about this, I was just like, you know, out of my mind practically with excitement and being overwhelmed. She says, would you like to do a regression? And I thought, are you out of your mind after all of this? You know, it's going to take me years. And I thought, oh, why not? And so she guided me back in time. And I was a child at the feet of Jesus when he said, let the children come to me. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In that moment, I knew exactly what those words meant. It's like I had come full circle back to my roots where I was beat up with religion, but now I understood it in a whole new realm. And that archetype of the beloved child of God became the representation of the eternal realm of being in the blueprint. So, I mean, it was like a huge shift. So things like that are just beyond description. And I would love to write that book and I've started and it's, and it's so much because there's so much symbolism and so much involved with all those different people, but um, someday I will. (laughs) You know, Pamela, I mean, I'm, my heart is so, I see Judy, put your hand on your heart, but like my heart is so, um, Oh, really, as I hear you, um, I could almost cry. I feel like my heart is so open and I'm so deeply touched at at so many levels. Um, And what I realize is that it's almost seems like because, and you see this a lot with people that end up like, I think of uh, Neil Donna Walsh who did, you know, conversations with God. I mean, he was sort of this regular guy and then he ended up, it's almost like because you didn't know, you were almost, you got emptied out and this was able to come through. And I think that truly, regardless of what our, our story is or our background, even what our belief is, I think we are all, and this is a question about the blueprint I have for you, you know, we're all really can be available for our own quote unquote blueprint or our download or whatever we each uniquely have available in our own way to express or to contribute into our relationships in the world right now. And I'm wondering, as I listen to you, you know, you have been living, and I know this because I've known you a long time. And again, it's been quite a journey, but, but have you been living and breathing and um, evolving this and giving it birth, you know, birthing it? where you are now and as you look at really sort of this precipice of, of really evolution I think we're on as a planet and for humanity where do you see the timing of this in 2021 for all of us you know how can this best be utilized and why now you know why now we're having this conversation on this edge walker and you're really putting it out there in your other books and your other offerings <laughs> What's your feeling about that? Um, what's your insight in terms of even oh. the timing and how it can best mm-hmm. be used for all of us, for our support? Right. Well, I think that now is a critical moment. Uh, we have had to shift everything about our lives in the past couple of years. And so I believe that the blueprint can be of great benefit And it has helped me because one of the greatest things that has happened to us is I think we have lived, or many people have lived in fear. Mm -hmm. And when we listen to the news, uh, which I avoid a lot, (laughs) Mm -hmm. um, it, it exemplifies that. So I believe that what I learned, one of the critical things I learned through the blueprint and what, how it can benefit others is that It is a way for greater self-discovery. And we are always on a self-discovery process and we keep going deeper and deeper, but this can help guide us to go even further than what we have in the past. And when we know our true essence, fear is eliminated Mm -hmm. because essence is God, it's energy, it's spirit. And you can never hurt or diminish or kill or die 
essence cannot. Mm -hmm. And so that's really critical. I think the blueprint also, so the in the personal aspect of the blueprint, it teaches us more about who we are. In the social realm, it teaches us more about why we are here and helps us to fine tune our priorities and use all of our gifts and our attributes for the highest good and to make a difference. And in the global realm, it teaches us how we are one with everything and everyone from the earth that we live in to everything that is available to us um, and to humanity at large so that we know our connection. We deeply, it, so it helps us by looking at each of the different cells in the matrix to uh, really tune into each aspect of who we are. And of course, in the eternal realm, it can show us how we um, discover our divine inheritance mm -hmm. and what is um, all the gifts, our superpowers, so to speak, so that we can use them. Because I think many of us really are not aware of what all of those are. So that is another way that the blueprint has helped me. I think we have felt separated and we crave this sense of connection and oneness and certainly opportunities like this have connected us uh, virtually with everybody around the world. So we have greater sense of, of connection. And one thing about the blueprint is that it is a universal tool because it is compatible with ancient teachings and new science, Eastern philosophy and Western psychology. Mm -hmm. It's not about religion, it's not about dogma, but it blends all of that together. And so it is relevant for seekers and spiritual students from all walks of life and all faiths. So I think it is timely. I think it is relevant and it's something that can be of great uh, benefit in a variety of ways. Well, well, that's um, an incredible. Uh, thank you for your response. And it really answers a question in a very deep and, and um, clarifying and holistic way. And in a sense, it's downloaded, but it also is a, a tool and a resource. And, you know, if you use it, it'll work for you. You know, I mean, it really will. And I think the times we're in now, it, on the, the sort of third dimensional level, I mean, we're all experiencing what we're experiencing, but it really is, a, I think these are times or a call to consciousness, a call exactly. to awaken, a call um, times to elevate and evolve. And in spite of what's going on, you know, I, I keep saying, you know, just keep watching the movie, stay in the divine witness, stay in the observer. It doesn't mean that we don't have concerns and we, can have compassion in that, but we really, I think when we know what we know, it's, I don't want to say responsibility, like it's an obligation, but when we have the tools and we have the awareness and we're awakening, you know, it's, um, you know, I feel that many of us, and we say this as edge walkers, we're bridging the world, you know, we're, it's another tool to bridge the blueprint to like ed, the edge walker work is to bridge people to the next level and to support each other as individuals and community right. and um, activating and discovering, acknowledging and living our own divine blueprint, whatever that may be. Because mm -hmm. I agree with you, whenever we're more connected to divinity and essence and consciousness, all the things of this world, it doesn't mean that they don't exist, but we don't have to live in fear at all. In fact, we can um, live in, if anything, in curiosity or in, in a higher level. So. Thank you. I'm, I'm so grateful for you, but for sharing this with the world, especially now and really putting it out there among the yeah. other things that you're doing. Yes, thank you. Well, one other thing that I just thought of is okay. that we've felt a little bit of lack during this time too. You know, there's been toilet tissue uh, issues and whatever. But one thing that I learned from the blueprint and from my uh, awakening is about abundance. And the blueprint showed me how abundance really works because when we are in harmony with others and the earth, 
there's this synergy that brings forth abundance from um, with, within that framework so that we can appreciate and tap into source and abundance. And so that was another really amazing gift that I received from the blueprint. I do know and believe that um, raising our own awareness is the greatest thing that we can do for the world. In fact, in Power Versus Force, Dr. David Hawkins said, to become more conscious is the greatest gift that we can give to the world. And moreover, in a ripple effect, the gift comes back to its source. So, you know, some of what I do, I feel like I'm receiving far more than I'm giving, which is, which is the way it should be, you know. One other thing that really uh, changed my life during the process of the blueprint emerging was the fact that I realized I was intuitive. Now, for someone who was trained as a nurse and, a, and scientifically uh, trained and with this background and very rational and logical, intuitiveness was something I was not aware of or felt that I had any um, interest in or connection to, but all of a sudden it became a part of my path as well. And I would, and I noticed it when I would be awakened in the night and I would think of like a family member, a friend that may have had an issue. And so I would uh, pray for them, so to speak. I would just see them and think good things for them. And my, I would go into motion. My hands would go into motion and, and I would be like shifting energy around. Um, well, that evolved to the point where I would be able to um, think of someone and uh, like write notes and tell them what I experienced and then I could be with them face to face. But what happened was I, uh, in the process, I learned I could speak instead of just feel. And when I did, I spoke in first person. And that was a powerful realization because, you know, truly we are one. And when I am healed, you are. And when you are healed, so am I. And so I began to do sessions with people face to face. And there would be a series of scenes and I would become like a mirror and, and act out like using drama, muscle, memory, positions, motions, the issues that I sensed. And every time something arose, there was always a shift, a realization, a new perception that changed the whole dynamics. And so this evolved, this kind of dramatic intuitive healing evolved into what I call spiritual blueprint. And because it's always related to the blueprint, there's an aspect that comes up, you know, maybe two or three at a time. But uh, so that has been a powerful experience. And I offer spiritual blueprintings um, and there's information on the website. But um, that intuitive evolution and awareness and the evolving of that particular gift was very profound also in parallel the blueprint. Well, Pamela, as I, I mean, I've had spiritual readings with you and they're incredibly healing and powerful. So if anyone is so inspired, um, I would really recommend them because they're intuitive spiritual readings and using the blueprint. So um, people can also get in touch with you on your website, Dr. Pamela Girali. But what's coming to me as I'm listening to you and I, and I think this for all of us, you, this, the blueprint has been emerging as you've been emerging. The blueprint has been evolving and expanding and deepening as you've been evolving and expanding and deepening. And I think it's also a, um, a model, if I'll use that word, for all of us to remember that that's true of all of us if we allow it. Yes. Whatever our particular blueprint is or path or gift or process or timing or transformational mm -hmm. journey, we can't give what we don't have. So for example, you couldn't give the readings until you got in touch with your intuition and realized you could do that. I feel that the times we're in now are ripe for each of us, and you're an incredible inspiration and leader in this, to 
allow to come forth something that maybe we've never birthed before. Because I think that a lot of what's needed on the planet in these times of change and unknown are things that haven't even existed yet. Right. So it's like, wow, you know, that makes me excited in spite of it. Things sometimes have to fall apart, so the, which is a lot of what's happening, so that the new can be birthed. Exactly. So each of us, regardless of what we do or where we are or age or whatever, our background, we have an opportunity to birth something new that could be or is going to be if we allow it and we cultivate it and we share it with patience and love and compassion, mm -hmm. our next gifts. I mean, I feel like that. I feel there's things that I haven't completely birthed because it's also in sync with what's happening in the world. And that to me is like exciting. It is. Now, as we release that, which no longer serves us, we grieve it, we let it go. So listening to your path is a model. I mean, do you feel that? Like, oh, it, absolutely. I'm wondering, like, I've known you for so long. It's like, wow, look at how Judy birthed Edgewalkers years yes. ago. You know, what's coming next? Yes. And you know, groups like this Edgewalker Cafe can help us come together and we activate each other and we support each other exactly. in birthing what is next and also what is needed in the, in the world right now on a global uh, eternal level. Exactly. Yes. And it's perfect because we all have our own blueprint. You know, this is a framework that I think can help everybody, but I think every one of us has our own inner guru that can lead us forth and my legacy of love to the universe is the blueprint as maybe Judy's is Edgewalkers and every one of us is has the potential to create a legacy and leave a legacy of love that is going to transform the world in some beautiful, profound way. And so I feel very blessed I, and I'm just overwhelmed by the opportunity to share. And I didn't have children. So this is like my child. <laughs> I have stepchildren and many, many nieces and nephews. But uh, this is what I am here to do. In fact, right before the blueprint emerged, I had seen a medical intuitive because I had an issue, a stomach issue. And they thought it was gallbladder. It wasn't. And they said, there's nothing wrong with you, but I knew there was. And she told me that I had uh, a gluten and a corn issue and to avoid those things. And sure enough, it went away as soon as I did. But, but she also said, I see you working with shapes and I see you, uh, you know, sharing something, you know, it's like, she's going like this. And, and then she says, do you have any questions? I says, yes, I would like to know why I didn't have children in this lifetime. She goes, oh, well, in a former lifetime, you lived in Appalachia, you had, were married three times, lost all three husbands, had 22 children, many of whom you lost, and you says, I can't do this again, you know, <laughs> and how could you be the mother of the earth and bring forth this greatest gift that you have if you had a family right. to take care of? Right. Well, two and a half days later, in the middle of the night, was when I had my first transmission of the blueprint. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, one other thing I would love to share is that I have a book coming out next week, and I had the picture, excuse me, one minute. I had the picture uh, up there, and it fell down, but it's called The Dance of Ego and Essence, Confessions of a Divine Diva. And my husband took this picture when we were in China. <laughs> so I think it's so beautiful. It's kind of the veil. And um, the book is about an experience that I had after I was, uh, in fact, after we came home from that trip, I had bronchitis and developed viral thyroiditis. I was flatlined for about six months. And when I finally uh, recovered and had my energy restored, uh, I, I think also that was the universe telling me to take a rest. <laughs> yeah. But um, I asked the universe, what should I do now? I had all these unfinished things in my uh, computer to work on all these projects. And I expected one of those would be uh, suggested, but no, I was told to get up early and write confessions for 40 days. And I'm like, Really? 
you know, I've been a spiritual student for a long time, but okay. Went to my office, sat in the silence for a few moments, and this word came to me, discipline. And I'm like, oh, I hate the idea of anybody telling me what to do or how to do things. You know, I'm like, oh, there's my first confession. I wrote it down in my journal and I wrote for an hour nonstop. It like flowed out of me. All my life experiences of how my parents and the church, everybody was so harsh. I was harshly disciplined and how when we internalize that and become self-disciplined that we can choose a new direction. And so discipline becomes direction. Mm. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know, and so then I wrote an affirmation, you know, I, am living in harmony with this. And the next day, scattered, ah, buoy, you know, it's like I keep going off in different directions. Every day for 40 days, something popped and I was able to see the impact of the blueprint on my life, how my life had shifted in these profound ways and how I was able to, you know, integrate what I had learned and live my truth and express essence of being. But there is a dance between egoness, between our personality. In fact, I tell also about how I was doing a session, one of my intuitive blueprinting sessions with a small group. There was four women and they were like a spiritual study group. And after I did kind of a generic session, I asked if each of them had a question. And one gal who was a very earnest teacher, she was actually studying uh, to be a chaplain and a, a minister. She says, well, how can I eliminate ego? So I was sitting there, you know, and she was saying how, you know, she really wanted to live her purpose and whatever. And all of a sudden, you know, I, I'm in a kind of an altered state and I'm starting to giggle. And I thought, oh, this is inappropriate. <laughs> and then this voice came to me, oh, you mortals and your egos. You know, if you would just learn how to merge your ego with essence so that you can express your divinity through your humanity. I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> but it was quite a lesson. And so I am thrilled to provide this um, book will be coming out next week. And there is a companion journal called Embrace Your Divine Inner Diva that you can do your own 40 days. And it's more than just journaling. And there's meditations, which I'm trying to get recorded at the moment. And uh, there's a playful dance kind of playful activity to bring it to life. So uh, that is something that you can also find on my website. And that journal is something you can just download and uh, print yourself. Wow. But it is a companion piece with the book or it can be used alone. So. Oh, thank you, Pamela. I mean, your, um, your abundant resources and gifts are um, I really invite people to look at your website, drpamelagirali.com to, to see those. And your story is so inspiring. And um, again, a model for also getting out of the way. And I do this a lot because I move around is to ask to co-create with your higher self, the universe, spirit, God, whatever you believe that to do, to ask and to expect mm -hmm. and to be open to receive and to get out of the way of how we think it needs to be. And then you're a continual inspiration for that. So thank you. Um, I'm so grateful that your story is amazing. I hope it really inspired everybody. Yes. But we I, I'm looking at the time because it's a it's a quarter of so just to give about, you know, five, 10 minutes maximum, if I want to open it up to any Q&A, any questions that anyone may have right now, we'll open them to Pamela. If there's anyone on the cafe today who has anything they'd like to, to comment or, or to ask Pamela at this time, this sure. would be time to do that. Anyone? Um, Roberta. Uh, yes, I just have a comment. Uh, Pamela and I have been dear friends for a long time. Um, and I met Pamela around the year 2000, 99, 2000, while she was in the midst of this incredible journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I had seen the blueprint 
Um, and I thought it was I, I thought it was brilliant. Uh, but brilliant is a, an inadequate word. Uh, I, I divinely brilliant. Is that a possibility? I don't know. But uh, it was just amazing to um, to sort of be there when this was all evolving. And uh, we we had just started uh, to be friends when Pamela got the download of all the archetypes. And um, she sent her writings of the description of the archetypes to me. And as I saw this coming through my through my email and I, I printed it out and it's, you know, the pages are coming out of my printer. I was just astonished uh, because I could see immediately how these exam archetype examples fit the boxes of the blueprint. And it's just so profound that, um, you know, I have been Pamela's uh, cheerleader and supporter for many years because I believe so deeply in the work that you are doing. And um, I, you know, it, it's my hope that uh, I will see how the blueprint uh, expands through the world. I am excited to see and welcome. Uh, we've got here uh, visitors from around the world, from Br uh, Greece and England and uh, South Africa Sweet. and Arkansas and Florida, <laughs> uh, all over the U.S. So uh, it's really wonderful to see this work um, spreading and, and bec people becoming aware around the world because I think it's so um, important. Uh, it's it's really important information. So Pamela, um, thank you, thank you for thank all you that you do, me. and uh, I'm always here uh, to to love and support you and your work. Thank you, thank you, Roberta. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyone else? Uh, Peggy. Hi, Just Peggy. Say thank you for bringing. Thank you. Out. Yeah, hi. <laughs> it's been so many years, so. It's just a joy, an absolute joy. So thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing her here. <laughs> um, and I apologize for being late coming. That's up. okay. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Yes. yes. With, yeah, go ahead, Pamela. I was just going to say, without sacred soul sisters and brothers, without the support that we receive from dear friends, we could never do this. And so I am so grateful for Roberta, for Peggy, for you and everybody who has been there for me. It is um, just a gift. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it very much. That's why, you know, what we're creating and continue to create with the Edgewalker community and the Edgewalker cafes is this is another way for us to support and connect and expand yes. and love each other and support each other. So um, thank you. And thank you, Peggy. Jennifer, I see you have your hand up for a question. <clears throat> yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, hi, Patricia. I'm just so happy to be here and equally grateful. Uh, Patricia, I have a question for you. I am Me? curious about what your journey has been like in terms of trusting spirit, you know, trusting the message, because I'm in a similar space of being very discerning about like not jumping into too many guided learning experiences. Like it's time for me to start trusting spirit and the voice and, all the synchronicities. So I wonder if you could speak to that. Is that well, for me or for, for Pamela, right? Or for me? You said Patricia um, and Pamela. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pamela. <laughs> Pamela. That's okay. Sure. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I, I was confusing your name. All right. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, Jennifer, I relate to that because I grew up with all that guilt, shame, and fear from the religion of my youth. And I was afraid to uh, trust anybody 
or even my own inner guidance. And in fact, there was a while that I thought if I could just have someone like Wayne Dyer or Deepak Chopra tell me I'm right, <laughs> then everything would be okay. But uh, then, uh, so I says, okay, well, I'm gonna write this affirmation that I am bringing a, a guru into my life now. And this voice said, well, what am I, chop liver? You know, it's like, <laughs> it was so clear. It was, <laughs> <In here. laughs> and it was almost like, okay, you don't have to, you, you can trust this. You feel it, you know it, you know it in your being, yeah. what is true and right for you. And so you take bits and pieces of what other people may share and you, or their experience and you allow it to just be there, but your own uh, inner guru to uh, lead you forward. And, I, and Pamela, Jennifer, something, I'll just expound on that. And it's not to promote necessarily um, my blog, but it's to, um, we do have an Edgewalker blog page. And it just so happens, Jennifer, that this month, if you look on it, um, the blog, my blog is um, Unconscious Choices and Uncertain Times, and the process of how to consciously choose the head and the heart and connecting with the divine, it might give you just a little bit of a deeper dive into that. Great. So, Thank you. I'll check that out for sure. Like, yeah, just to kind of build on what, you know, we're all kind of complement each other here, but I thought I'd throw that in. Um, Before Judy takes over, I will say yeah. that I am going to be doing a class, introductory class about the blueprint. It starts on October 11th. It's going to be just an hour, six sessions. The first one's free. And so I'll make sure that information is on my website. And so you're, you're all welcome to join me for that as well. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela. So Judy, um, I know we're getting a little, or it's almost five of the hour. So um Judy, did you, I see your hands up. Did you want to say something or? Yeah, I had a question. Um, and actually just to say to Jennifer, if I, if I build on what I think Pamela has shared around her experience, um, it, after getting a download, it sounds like if you write it, yes, Pamela, if you write it, then I think it opens the channel for more. And mm -hmm. that, that, that that is a way of trusting it is to write it down. Right. And it just flows. It seems to just pour out of you in, in amazing ways. Like the book that I wrote, The Dance of Ego and, and uh, Essence, just it flowed with uh, personal story. It's very raw. It's very, uh, you know, radical honesty, but it purges the soul. And that is an ex exercise that I think is relevant and helpful for all of us because it helps us see where we've been and and then even what the possibilities are. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Judy. Oh, oh. Yeah, my, well, that wasn't my question. That was a statement. <laughs> you have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, my question is, Pamela, can you give us like in two minutes just a brief overview if someone were to have a session with you, and I these days I have to do it on Zoom, what what would that be like? How do you work with people? Um, well, there is a video on my website that does describe it a little bit. But to summarize, I, we begin with in a state of openness and receptivity, affirming that we are ready, open, and willing for uh, this to occur. And then I close my eyes and take a deep breath and relax. And then my body starts to move, you know, and, and I just know, in, in fact, I received a huge download one day of what every position and motion and body part means in, in reflecting this healing process. I mean, it just whooshed right over me. So <clears throat> that was another powerful thing, but uh, what I, you know, so I will go into motion and then uh, express what I'm feeling and sensing in first person and what I'm doing. You know, if I'm rocking back and forth in my chair, that's indecision. I have a choice to make. And then, uh, or if we reach a fork in the road, you know, if, if I'm stuck on my chair and I can't get up and move forward, you know, there's something holding me back. Mm -hmm. And if, if I have cement shoes on and I can't step forward, you know, I mean, there's all this amazing symbolism and, and uh, positions that it just reveals exactly so that you 
in participating in this process can sense and feel this as well. You know, it's not just words, it's the experience of it that makes a huge difference. Wow, that's exciting. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. And the other thing about it is there is always a shift in perception and healing is basically as easy as a shift in perception. It doesn't have to be huge, but it is just a light bulb going off and us looking at things from a whole different point of view. So that is another learning. <laughs> Thank you, Pamela. Thank you for the great question, Judy. Appreciate that. And um, so we're getting close to the top of the hour unless does anybody really have one more question because we need to kind of get close to wrapping it up. And again, I'm, um, I don't see any other hands or anything. I mean, again, it's Dr. Pamela Girali. Pamela, I am just so moved and you know how, how much you mean to me all these years, but how we can um, co-create, but just I'm excited that I've uh, been able to really create a space to continue to highlight your work in the world and the divine uh, blueprint and for those of us on the call, but also for humanity. So. Thank you for your courage and your willingness and your beauty and your wisdom and your um, amazing, really, information and story today. I think we'd probably all agree. Thank if you. Any, if, if anybody wants to watch my one woman show called Confessions of a Spiritually Promiscuous Woman, it mm -hmm. is on my website on the about page. And uh, it is actual a video of one that I had performed in a church. I did this quite a bit to share my story. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody relates to it, but it is funny and touching yeah. and, and appealing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the actual uh, show begins about minute 12. So if you want to scroll ahead, you know, through the welcome and, and then, but you don't want to miss my husband's introduction. <laughs> it comes before that, but uh, I wanted to make sure you knew that uh, it's, it's fun. I had more fun doing that, sharing my story and uh, lightening up because I think what we need right now is a lot of joy and a lot of fun so that we can actually express that part of us, which is joyful, the essence of our being. Well said and well put to kind of complete this amazing time today. And I want to thank all of you who are here or who were here for your presence today and your light and your beauty and um, your purpose and contribution in the world. I mean, it's and to really help to support this community. We also support all of you. So thank you so thank much you. for your courage and your grace. And dear Judy, do you have um, any announcements or anything you want to make um, regarding Edgewalkers or anything that might be coming up in the next month or so yeah, at this point? Thank, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Patricia. Our next Edgewalker Cafe is on October 21st. We do these um, on every four Thursdays. Uh, every Thursday we publish a blog for three weeks, and then on the fourth one we do an Edgewalker Cafe. So the next one is October 21st. That will be hosted by our other um, senior associate in Edgewalker, Susan Furness, who is in the Middle East. And I, I don't know her topic or her guest yet. But uh, if you want to know more about what we're doing, you can see that on our website, edgewalkers.org, or uh, sign up for our newsletter, at, or probably both. <laughs> yeah, and so you can sign up for the newsletter on the website. So we'll be sending out details about that as soon as we have them. Um, but Patricia and Pamela, thank you both so much for this magical, magical mm -hmm. session. I think we're, we're all feeling lit, lit up yeah. and excited um, about Pamela's blueprint, about our own wisdom. Um, and Pamela, you're a huge resource and a huge gift. Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you for creating Pamela thank you, and, <laughs> and be with us. Yeah. Thank you so Pamela, much. Thank you again, and thank you, uh, Judy, and everyone for being here. And have a, a blessed day. And and everyone be safe and take care and mm -hmm. and be well. We look forward to seeing you next time. Yes. Thank you. All right. Blessings. Blessings. And Pamela and Patricia, if you want to stay on. Stay on. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I'm going Hi, to stop. Everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm.